Most of you think that the Earth and the planets go round the sun, don't you? That's the story. And in having that view, you have a view that was put forward initially by Nicholas Copernicus in the 16th century. When he first put this forward, he was overturning a view that had dominated in Europe for a couple of millennia, ever since Aristotle. And in Aristotle's account, the Earth was at the centre of the universe and the stars and the planets went round the Earth. And his explanation of how this worked were that the stars were on sort of giant spherical spheres that we couldn't see. They were sort of transparent. He called them crystal spheres. And, and they carried the stars on them. They were sort of fixed to these, you know, transparent stuff going across the sky. We obviously think that's absurd, don't we? But did this mean that before Copernicus, we couldn't predict the positions of the planets. We couldn't predict when eclipses would take place. Not a bit of it. Aristotle's account of the universe was refined by a guy called Ptolemy, and they published a whole series of tables of exactly where you would find things in the sky. And it was unbelievably accurate. And to give you an idea of just how accurate, when Copernicus put forward his story, he didn't think that it was any better than the Aristotelian system. In fact, he assumed that the Aristotelian Ptolemaic account was exactly accurate. It wasn't for more than 200 years after he put it forward that there were any ways in which the heliocentric uh, world, as, it, as it's known, of Copernicus was seen to have any uh, observable benefits. And there are some people who would argue that we can correct, as it were, the Aristotelian account in order to get it just as effective now as the heliocentric account. So what's going on here? We, we assume that it's, it's wildly wrong. So how's it so accurate?